Hi, this is Donna Montgomery and welcome to my YouTube video. I'm going to be doing a study of the 14th level Achidia Purgatory 18 by Salvador Dali. And this was done in 1958, well between 1958 and 1965. I will do a visual analysis and I will also do a description, a compositional analysis, a contextual analysis and an interpretation. And I will be using some of the um, things we've learned from this week in um, the Interpreting Visual Images, week number eight. So I'll get on with it and I'll hold up the picture. So you won't be looking at me, you'll look at the picture. This is, I purchased this picture a few years ago and I had it appraised and these, uh, a lot of the findings that I'll be talking to you about are from the appraisal as well as Dante's Inferno as well as different notes and things from Salvador Dali, and then I'll be using um, Gillian Rose's chapter 4 and 5. And so for the first part, I'm going to give you a description. This is, the, as I've noted before, level 14, Achidia Purgatory 18 from Salvador Dali. It's a woodcut engraving, and it is one of Dali's 100 illustrations of Dante, Dante's comedy. It's a retouched watercolor hand signed by the artist, and uh, it was uh, done in 1970. Uh, well, the actual signing was done in 1974. So let me go on to the compositional analysis. This is, according to Gillian Rose, some of her things uh, in her uh, chapter called The Good Eye. There are four swirling characters, and you can see the characters in here. Um, and they are arranged in the direction of the center of the format. Color spectrums include goldenrod, ochre, orange, medium blue, aqua, dark blue, medium brown, dark brown, gray, and black. The characters are arranged in a whirlpool shape, one layered next to the other. One, uh, two small angelic figures are on the bottom, and you can see them. Um, one is here, and one is here. The line and motion represented is circular and leads the eye to the central blue-faced figure with the forked tongue extended. There are contrasting and varying shades of orange, yellow, brown, and blue. Black is used to define the features of each character and create depth and intensity in color spectrums. The swirling pattern creates swift circular brush strokes, creates action and movement, and there is a broad sense of perspective as the figure in the foreground seems to be walking and thusly thrown off track by the swirling, uh, um, unassuming spiritual figures. Dali used swift broad strokes to formulate the action of circulation while there is a slight intricate acuity prescribed on the faces of the characters with minimal texture. So. The next part I will go to is the content analysis, and this is uh, from Gillian Rose, Chapter 5, and also I used Starkin and Cartwright, pages uh, 49 through 48. I also used Albert Sig uh, Scaglioni, he was the appraiser, and also the WordPress on Dante, and Dante's Inferno. The title of the work, Achidia, means slothful. According to Dante's epic poem, The Divine Comedy, Dante was led through purgatory or hell by the poet Virgil. I'm giving you this to contextualize the background of the piece and understand the cultural, get some cultural clarity as well. He is shown, so um, Dante is shown the, um, the seven terraces of hell which contain sinners that are categorized in the following. They are proud, they are envious, they are wrathful, slothful, covetous, gluttonous, and lustful. Dali's work, Achidia, reveals elements that are used to depict the purgatorial terrace of slothfulness. We see the slothful the Thebians, these are residents of Thebes, swirling about in agitation in life, and they were slothful people once who were lazy, self-absorbed, and hedonist, deficient in love. On all fronts, these Thebians failed to love anyone but themselves in their earthly lives. They were the antithesis of virtue. And we see in the center 
Bacchus, the guide, the god of wine and lasciviousness. You'll see Bacchus right here. He's the this guy right there. Um, and so he's in the front, and uh, let's see. And he's the bearded siren in the left of the format, and the angels seen at the bottom, as I pointed out before. Uh, their role is the spiritual guide to call out the sinners and proclaim their sins. It is interesting to note that the similar angels may appear in other. Dolly works. Dolly used the following passage in Dante's poem as the content for his work, and here's the quote. And as of old by night, a fury and root along Isminus and Aesopus heed, but if the Thebians from Bacchus sought. The frenzied movement in Achidia reflects the struggle surmounted by the slothful Thebians who were in the afterlife sought. They sought to find out, find wine to drown out their regrets. By understanding the content of this work, Dante's narrative, the viewer is drawn into the frenzied movement and actions of the figures. The circular motion creates a whirlpool which draws one down metaphorically into the depths of hell. Knowing the content and the context invokes feelings of frenzied desire for re um, resolution or absolution. This is not a mythological scene. It is one that reveals the plight of the damned soul pulled down into hell, a scenario that most Christians fear. So now I'm going to go to my personal thoughts on this. So let me put this back and let you look at it one more time. So um, we are, I'm going to be using Starkin and Cartwright's ideas from uh, page 69 to 84 and also E.B. Feldman to kind of formulate my opinion. What, one, what can one say about Salvador Dali's painting? The surrealist master is often so strange that it, it, it is his, his work is untouchable. The work, however, touches one's soul on many levels. Dali's choice of subject matter that of the Thebians led us into, that were led to purgatory relays human drama, one that has been speculated throughout history in both holy and secular literature. There is a personal element here that describes the nightmare of the damned soul in agitation, seeking to rectify what could have been. The swirling agitated motion evokes emotions of hopeless fury, knowing that the subject narrative is key to purposing the feelings of hopelessness, regret, anger, and desire for resolution. Because these damned souls appear in the afterlife, there is, according to Catholicism, no hope for resolution. The souls are committed to an eternal life of hell or misery, and the phrase weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth comes to my mind as we view these hopeless souls. The fact that Bacchus appears in the mix makes the viewer aware that even Bacchus and his wine cannot solve the eternal dilemma. Regarding the formal aspects of Achidia, Dali used rapid simplistic strokes as a tool to evoke agitation and fury, which actually heightens the emotion of the work. Though it is not intricate, an intricate drawing, the tiny angels and parts of the faces seem to have intricate detail. This art piece is not one of Dolly's best formal works, but the quality is one that one could expect from a wood engraved, wood engraved painting. Overall, the artist has successfully delivered the subject matter content and form to me, the viewer. So in conclusion, the visual analysis has provided a description, a compositional analysis, a content analysis, and my personal reading of a for. Uh, the level 14, Achidia Purgatory 18 by Salvador Dali. And I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. Let me just put here in front, I will give you my notes. And here's the notes, teacher, just so you know where I got some of this stuff. Anyway, have a great day. Thank you.